Hello there ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Today we got a game called Still Water. I have no idea what this game is all about. I'm going in blind. I downloaded this game off of itch.io. It seems like it's some kind of murder mystery visual novel kind of stuff. So let's just hop into it and just let's kick start, I guess. You got it. Still Water. And I gotta say you guys, I don't, I'm not a big fan of horror, horror games. None of this game is... Horror, horror game? Is this a horror game? Well, I have no idea. Just... Right. You guys need to experience this with me, of course. I have no idea what this means. What the... Open dyslexic. Deja vu sans. Do <laughs> I have no idea. Let's just, let's just leave it on the normal control and let's just go out of this. How do I exit? Alright, let's, let's just start, I guess. Viewer's discretion is advised. <laughs> Alright, we got the taker here. The caretaker. I can't, I can't do it today. I'm sorry, but I can't stay here anymore. Nina. Nina. I feel like I'm going crazy. Calm down. If, and just talk it out. Alright, so we got Nina. This woman. She is screaming the phone. Can you stop screaming, please? Caretaker. So many strange things keep happening over and over. Every day there is a damn dripping sound. I thought it was just some something leaking at first, but but it kind of sounds like a, an ancient Chinese torture device, to be honest. The dripping, like people in ancient China just use this torture method, just put like a rag on their face or something, just constant dripping makes people go insane. Trust me, I've experienced with it. Right. Checked every faucet, every ceiling, every pipeline and still. Still, I hear it everywhere, constantly echoing in my ears. Oh, but the water. <laughs> I find random pools of water just appear out of nowhere, just like the dripping. Kinda, kinda suspicious. Alright, we just, we're just going in very blind here. But, it's at night. It's at night when it... I just had a stroke. It's at night when it comes. Nina. Is Nina even believing what, what the caretaker is telling them right now? Because is this is this a face or is this like a, a dust between comas? Because I have no idea. I'm just assuming that it's like silence. I don't know if it's my paranoia, but I swear I could hear footsteps walking along the hallways, walking on pools of water. Yeah, I think the caretaker is a bit of a loony, you guys. I think I think she's gone bonkers a bit. They walk. They walk. Upstairs, downstairs. But I don't know where. I don't like where this game is going so far. I don't like horror games. Upstairs, downstairs, upstairs. Okay, yeah, she is. She is a, a loony, certified loony. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, no scared person would just upstairs, downstairs, upstairs. It's, it just sounds abnormal. You know what I mean? And it goes on and on and on and on like that. But somehow it does come to an end. And it ends all in front of my grandfather's room. <sighs> I swear the guns from you want I'm just I'm just guessing it. Grandfather's room is probably haunted. You know what? He has like a dead carcass under th underneath the floorboarding or something. I'm just guessing right now. Nina, would you say something, please? <laughs> she keeps getting us with the silence. I know that this is a lot, but you have to believe me. No matter how many times I clean, it just won't end. And stay here any longer. I'm sorry, Nina. Classic Nina. <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed you would reply with silence again, Nina. Oh, it's okay. I understand. Thank you for taking care of my grandfather. Nina, please listen to me. I don't know what's happening around here, but... Alright. The woman on the phone cautiously looks around before speaking again in a hushed tone. The woman on the phone? You mean the caretaker? Or you mean Nina? Yeah, I'm assuming it's the caretaker. Something terrible is slacking through this house. Is this, is this a grandfather? He, he, he kind of seems... He kind of... He kind of looks a bit young to be a grandfather, to be honest. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but please, as soon as you get back, take your grandfather and just leave this place. How, how do you even convey this over phone? What do you even say? Question mark, question... <laughs> no. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Uh, what what kind of what kind of audible sound would you make for three exclamation mark? What 
What is this? I can't just leave this. That's my house. Wait, are we asking Nina to leave her own house? Please, Nina. This place is not safe. I don't know what you saw, but I can't just leave things like this. Alright, Nina. Nina, you don't understand. Nina just acts like the typical protagonist in a horror movie that just denies everything that we just saw. Nina, just listen to us. Oh! I actually see it. What is that? Oh, I don't like it. Oh, I'm, I'm getting shivers right now. Here, take it. Nina, it's, it's, I know it's your home. Trust me, I know Nina, and I want to get out of it. Oh boy, I, do, I, hate, I hate horror games. <laughs> I'm getting shivers all over my body. Here, take it. Uh oh. The okay, caretaker had us for being three dots. So, diner, 7 a.m., I think. A metaphoric morning. There sits a man by the corner of a booth. He drinks a black coffee and depending on his mood, occasionally orders a donut. Hmm, one of the chances that he is a, he's a copper rooney. A coffee and, and donuts. And uh, I'm describing someone here. And today it was just black coffee. Oh, it's, it's this guy. The guy from the opening uh, menu thingy. Opening scene. Scene? No, it's a menu. Uh, uh. There you go, Hugo. Classic Hugo movement. I swear, I've never seen that amount of paperwork in my life. Freaking mountain worth of it. Come on, to be honest, the artwork in this game so far is really, really atmospheric. Atmospheric? Aesthetic? You got, just look at Hugo. Just without his nose and without facial details much. It is really, really fine artwork right here. Something that I could not achieve in a million years. It kind of looks very awesome, that coat, by the way. It's trench coat, I, I, you know, I don't know my fashion sense, but I swear this is a trench coat, maybe, perhaps. You're available member of our team, Hugo. You're available, Hugo. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going off. My foot. Oh, I see. My foot. I'm starting to believe that I was bamboozled into joining their agency. Isn't he like a detective? How is he? How did someone bamboozled a detective? Uh, Hugo Laurent, age 30, takes a good look at his cup of joe and chugs it all in one sitting. You're saying that the person who made the coffee just brewed the coffee very hot, steaming. This guy, Hugo Laurent, age 30, just takes, takes a good look at it and just sips it all in one sitting? I don't think that's possible. To be honest, I've tried it before, it did not end up very well. Biosophagus was crying for help. He then continues to grumble to himself about last night's grueling work at the office. I really need to find a different job, says Hugo, who is very tired, who just drank one cup of coffee in one sitting. As he contemplates his poor life choices, he looks out towards the early mist. Nice classic mist. There was something inherently terrifying about the fog to him, how it engulfs everything and nothing. Even if it disappears, it always leaves behind traces, proof of it remaining. That sounds like something a detective would be thinking of, evidence and clues. Even in a quaint little town like this, I can't even run from my fate, I guess. <laughs> we got Detective Hugo who is terrified from fogs. Be honest, that's uh, justified. Maybe, perhaps. Is it a lovely Vulpin? Kind of very, very full of ink, to say the least. <laughs> but if that's important. Hugo finally stares at the compiled newspaper clippings he put together. Some of them from recent events, but mainly all were past headlines and missing person cases. It's classic Hugo. No matter how many times I see this, it's still just as hard to look at. Fixating case after another. A fix fixating case after case, he can't help but remind himself that there is a reason for all of this. An all too personal reason. I agree with you a bit. I do agree with you. Seeing strange things come with a price. In the end, I'm the only thing... Oh, excuse me. I, I'm really wandering through my thoughts right now. In the end, I'm the I'm the one doing this to myself. 
Question mark, question mark, question mark says, Sounds rough. Mind if I join? An annoyingly familiar voice interrupts his train of thought. He slowly looks up to see that one responsible, although reluctantly. Oh my god, this guy is built like a brick wall. What is this? This guy has trip. Who was this giga chat of a male? Good morning, Hugo. Hugo scowls and turns away from him. He then gathers the file and shoves it up. Shoves it up. I was going to see shoves it up in the industry. Shoves it back into the binder. Likes a binder. Meanwhile, the tall man takes this as an in initiative and sits at the opposite end of the booth. But can we talk about this guy? This guy is tall. I'm assuming you go over here is six foot. This guy must be six foot five or something. This guy is almost at the ceiling of the diner. This guy is going to bump into every single <laughs> every single door he sees. He greets the waitress passing by and orders himself the hefty body breakfast special for the next airplane. Why did they emphasize the hefty body breakfast meal? Special. But don't forget special. There's no meal. With an extra plane. Right? <clears throat> As usual, the waitress is happy to oblige and goes back to the counter to relay his order. The man then looks back at Hugo. He sees the empty cup and the now jumbled newspaper clippings all the while he was trying to ignore him. Alright, so Hugo is sitting on himself and this guy, the giga chat of a male, just sits right next to him. And he says that it was a familiar voice, so I'm assuming that he's some kind of a colleague, maybe a friend of Hugo. Like the one annoying friend that you just don't want to hang out, but he just keeps on coming and then... <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you really should eat something but black coffee. Um, donuts? Not ordering any donuts today? Yep, called it. Not ordering any donuts today? You don't want any donuts? Here you go. I'm fine. No. Kinda looks like a no. I don't know. With his sharp jaws. Christ, that jaw is very, very sharp. I'm just not in the mood, okay? Not even a little? And with the three dots, the silence. There's a momentary silence between them before Noah disturbs it once more. Well, too bad for you. I ordered a big breakfast for the two of us. Oh, any, any winks? Was that wink before? I don't think so. <laughs> you got two? You know, I don't know why, but drawings of food is so delicious, much more delicious looking than real life food. But I, oh my god, this, these two sausages, two eggs, two bacons, a, a pile of sugary diabetes and, and beans, I, what is this, chips? Is this beans or chips, which one is it? As if the world could grace Noah with an even more perfect punchline. The food arrives. Why the hell did you order for the two of us? Ask Hugo. Just eat what you want to eat. Don't worry about it. But actually, Hugo needs to eat a bit. This this thing is really, really thin. This guy is a thin boy. Whoa, this looks so delicious, right Hugo? Are you even listening to me? Come on, we both know that. If you don't eat now, who knows? When you will... When you will, and I'm not about to let you fade again. And I don't know if I'm dys dyslexic. No, maybe I am dyslexic. <laughs> I just, I cannot, I can't read today for some reason. So hard. So, open wide. Oh, did I, did I download a Yowie? Yowie? Yowie visual novel? Oh. Noah, De Leon. I should have known his, his last name is De Leon. Look, look, look at the De Leon guy. De Leon, age 27, a natural born charmer, is just as equally persuasive as he is threatening. <sighs> Classic tall guy. With a pensive look, pensive one, pensive look, Hugo finally gives in and eats the generous spoonful without further complaint. He's eating a spoonful of the beans? Now that beans kind of looks delicious, I'm guessing this is tomato or a ketchup. One of them. I don't know why you want to eat beans with ketchup. That would make you a cereal color. So, I'm guessing this is not beans, just just chips. But why would he eat like a spoonful of chips with a spoon? Makes no sense to me. It's good. Yeah, we know it's good, Hugo. Trust me. Right? 
Good food will always help you cheer up. Cheer you up. Damn him. I got swept away again. Ah, look at that smile. Giga, Giga Chad smile. Oh, by the way, the chief will be out for business trip. She mentioned it will be for a couple of days. Chief. Chief is a woman. Chief. Chief. They work in the same police department. Same precinct, I guess. Same private institute for detective people. I no idea. Is this a law? F are, they, are they lawyers? Law firms? When did she tell you this? I didn't hear anything about it. You go, you need to turn off the silence in your phone then. Maybe you could. Perhaps. Hmm. Hmm. Yesterday, I think. Yesterday? She told me this. To sort out of the cabinets yesterday. She didn't mention anything about business trip. Oh, here you go. I guess it was pretty sudden one. Well, I mean, she did tell me to tell you. And lucky me, I know where you go every morning. Ah, oh, yes. Classic diner at 7 a.m. every morning. You are too predictable, my friend. Whenever serial killer was stalking you or something, he would know your schedule in like two days. Maybe one. Who knows? You know what? I'm not surprised anymore. Well? What do you want to do? We definitely have the day off. We're gonna head back to the office. There's a couple of boxes I didn't get. Chance to sort out. You know what? You guys are such a workaholic. Wakes up, I'm guessing 6 a.m. the morning, goes to the diner 7 a.m. of the morning, then goes right ahead and just does his work. Sorting out cabinets and files and stuff. This, this guy is a huge workaholic. He needs, he needs a break. In that case, I'll come with you. Gladly, Noah. Why? You could just rest for the day. And pass up this opportunity, this opportunity to get to know you better. So they're not. I thought I thought they were long life friends or something. I thought they knew each other from the beginning. Put it. After the enlightening banter, the two of them finished their breakfast, pay for the meals, and head to Hugo's car. A classic banter. Banter between colleagues, of course. You guys wouldn't understand watching these videos. <clears throat> Ah, yes. Beautiful dashboard. Classic radio. Two air conditioning units. I don't know about the third one over here. Alright. As Noah opens the door to the passenger seats, he notices a bloodhound slipping inside. Blood... Bloodhound? Is that type of dog or are we talking about like a... A devil? A, a devil. I don't know why I said devil. <laughs> oh, look at him. So cute. And uh... What's that one character? I can't remember him. Yeah, it's like uh, from. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, never mind. Never mind. From the one movie that just everything turns apocalyptic by food, I guess. The big dog stares at the sound of the car opening and lazily stares at Noah. Lazily stares with what eyes. This dog looks like an enemy protagonist who's about to unleash his special move or something. Sorry, big guy. Then closes the door while trying not to make too much noise to disturb his occupant. Of course, of course. Colby. Oh, he has eyes! The sound of his name, his heavy lidded eyes, slowly peek to see who calls for him. This dog is so cute. What a cute dog. It is. His one and only partner. He's human. As if finally realizing who he is, or where he is, the bloodhound, the old bloodhound, stares up from his sleep, pounces at Hugo and proceeds to wag his tail uncontrollably. Ah, classic Colby. <coughs> Colby. That's an unusual name, Colby. You know, I do like to analyze names. Colby. Colby. Colby? Is, is it Colby or Colby? Alright, you want to just, just call him Colby. A bark. Good morning again, Colby. Had a nice nap. Colby, eight years old. Hmm. Hugo's most faithful and loving partner in crime. You know, I never saw Hugo this happy before with, with blushes, no less. The sky is aesthetic to look his dog in the eyes. And I like, I love the relationship with Colby and, and Hugo already. They're you know, like best friends. <laughs> Has the biggest tendency to just leave all over the place. What's up, what's up with Noah? Noah, who is witnessing all of this from the back seat, chuckles to himself. He is amazed and slightly defeated at Hugo's sudden surge. 
of energy. Yeah, I was gonna say this guy. This guy just had a cup of coffee. Was that? Was that energy going? Took him. Took him a minute to for his digestive system to just digest the food. I I guess the coffee. Ah, doesn't matter how many times I try. When it comes to boosting up his mood, no one can beat. Ah yes, classic Colby. I hope Colby doesn't die somehow. Agency, 7.50 a.m. The three headed back to the office. The space, the same as Yuga left it. And is this, is this dust I'm seeing? Or oh, is this like special effects? Which one is it? A decent organized mess. To his credit, for the amount of boxes he painstakingly went through, he believes he did a fair job. Albate could have been better. Albate, what is an albate? Wow, you really outdid yourself, Hugo. Looks uh, less crowded. Shut it, will you? Yeah, no. Stop being so cool. God damn it. I said I was gonna get to it. Yeah, Colby. Colby's too, ha too handsome of a duck. Too cool. Too fluffy. For his own sake. Before Hugo continues to give deserved head pats, he notices someone. All right, you know, this either, well, hold on, let me just take uh, a quick sip of my beautiful water. Always drink H2O. He notices someone. A woman stands timidly, peering outside from the front door. The store front. The woman has appeared to be a bit frantic. Is this a caretaker? Disheveled and wearing ill-fitted clothes, she appears to be distressed about something. Uh, here he comes. The first case of the day, Hugo. When she finally makes eye contact with Hugo, she immediately rushes in. And oops, I mean, miss, <clears throat> what you, what you, what do you, what do you want? I'm so sorry. I know that the close sign is up, but I saw you come in and I... Are you alright, miss? That's, that's, that's a good question, Hugo. Are you alright, miss? Kinda sweating profusely there. I need your help. My grandfather, he... Oh, she's Nina. I bet. Oh, she can continue. Noah swiftly intervenes. I swear, Noah, stop being so cool. It's okay. We'll hear what you have to say. No, oh, please. You can see. You know, I... You know, I notice this with every badass character. They have their hands in their pockets. Alright? If you want to appear badass, just wear... Just do what Noah does. Just put your hands, your gigantic hands, into your pockets. You'll look much more awesome and cool and badass that way. Take a seat, why don't you? No adjustments to one of the empty chairs. The poor woman hesitates for a moment before heavily sighing and... All right, what happened? You, you want to explain? She then walks towards the corner of the room and sits on the sofa. Do we offer her to sit in one of these kind of chairs, these office chairs, or do we offer her to sit on the sofa? Which one is it? Can you start off by telling us your name? You and I have a sneaking suspicion. Her name is Nina. You and I don't know why, but I just, I just guessed. Sorry for you. My name is Nina. More time. It's just my intuition, you guys. Just that smart. More timer. It's more timer. I need help watching over my grandfather tonight. Why are you so scared and frantic about him? <laughs> just wanna. You know, Watching over your grandfather, you guys gonna say, We're not your caretaker, we're not, we're not babysitters, we're not grandfather setters over here. Jesus Christ, lady. Yes, I'm sorry, Miss Water, but I don't quite understand. Is he in danger? I'm afraid he is. Or oh, is he now, Nina? <laughs> I'm guessing that's the reaction from the triple exclamation mark. <laughs> Miss Mortimer, if that is the case, wouldn't contacting the police be better? No, 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 no. Look how, look how, she's sweating profusely, her eyes widen up. She shouts. Jesus Christ, lady, please tone it down again. No, I've tried requesting their help, but they all gave me the same answer. There's nothing they can do about it. Alright, so we have the mystical ghost just going around her house, just doing random bits and stuff right and left. I don't like this, I don't like this one bit. You know, at the opening scene, when we saw the grandfather um, just sitting on the sofa, I guess, or the couch, whatever the chair was, he was just sitting down and there was like a, a black figure just standing in front of him. I'm guessing that was the ghost monster slash demon. I think either, either way, I don't like this one bit, you guys. I, yeah. Nothing I can do about it. If only I knew who Lewis was. Oh, which is 
introducing random characters. Who is Lois? Lois? Uh, Nina Fidgets. Fidgets. Have you seen uh, the name? She looks so. Uh, she looks to the side before reaching out from her bag for an antique letter. My grandfather, he received a cryptic message the other day. It didn't come with an address or a name of the sender. However, the only thing I did pick up was the name. Alright, Lois. Who's, who's Lois? We're talking about family guy here. Ooh. As she hands over the letter, Hugo notices her hands slightly shaking. Whatever lies in this note must have shaken her this badly. Alright, it's gonna jump scare us. What's, what's inside this letter, please? please. Oh, he's not gonna even show, it's just, just wordings. Oh, maybe? Delicate, delicately, Hugo removes the content of the envelope and unfolds it. At the first glance, it seems like a normal written message. But before we indulge ourselves in reading this message, this thing, the stamp, this color red stamp, do you know, do you guys know how to use it? Do you have like a, what's it called? Um, it's like a candle or a wax. The heat up the wax, it becomes water, you put it on the stamp thingy and then push with a, with a stamp. I don't know how to really explain how this works, right? Take a wax, pour it, pour the hot wax, the melty wax, the soluble wax on, on the, the note and then stamp it with your own stamp that has like a ceiling. It creates a ceiling, so whenever the stamp is broken, you can see if someone opens it or not. This is really neat. Just wanted you guys to know about that. At first glance, it seems like a normal written message. A person named Lewis. A person named Lewis asking the other, Henry, to come meet him by the lake at midnight, needing to share something important with him. However, what's eerily striking about this letter is not the message itself. Rather, at the bottom of the page, a sentence for far more disturbing is written. <sighs> I am coming for you, Henry. I am coming for you, Henry. Uh, that is... <laughs> All right, sir. Uh, is this, is this the US? Can we, can we exercise our second amendment here? Yes. Uh, <sighs> and Hugo, I think, I think you need, uh, you need a permit for a gun with you for 24 hours. 247. Yes, saying. I'm coming for you, Henry. Were there any other letters like this? Yes, a few of them. I thought it was a sick joke at first part. This one. This one was different. Up until now, I've never heard of anyone by that name. A relative or a family friend. But they clearly know who my grandfather is. If I don't do something about this, I will lose. I will lose him too. That you know what the only thing suspicious is that the drop of drop of tear. That that tear is very huge to say the least. That, that, that tear is the side of her eyes, currently. What is that tear? Just by uttering the words alone, Nina breaks down. Calm down, Nina. Everything is gonna be alright, alright? I might be scared, I might be shivering in my boots currently, but I'll do my best. It's my job. And I'm guessing that I am Hugo, the, the main main character. Main character Hugo. He sounds, he sounds like a main character to me. Hiding away her tea, streaked face, she begins to quietly sob to herself. As an act of comfort, Colby sits close in and while Noah fetches tissues. But you know, Colby, Colby is such an emotion, intelligent, emotional this guy, this Colby, knows what he's doing. I trust Colby with my life. You go down there and on. <laughs> you know, maybe I am truly dyslexic. Hugo, on the other hand, is puzzled. Yeah, he he looks very puzzled right now. Oh no, he's even more puzzled. This this is a phase of puzzlement right here, guys, gentlemen and ladies. This very well could have been a prank, but she seems certain. Certain than whoever or whatever this Lewis person is, they're coming. But I don't think people would prank the other people to this extent where they tell them to meet at the middle of the lake in the midnight. Do you want more tissues? No, just, just put the tissues on, on the desk. You want, she'll, she'll grab one if she wants to. I'll do it. I'll take on your case. The face. The face of determination. This guy shall do anything he's capable to. You know what? As as he is the main protagonist, I'm guessing the plot armor will significant play a significant role in all of this. Excuse me, I just drank water. For a moment, silence fills the room. All his stares are directed at Hugo. Until Nina finally stands up and walks towards him. 
All he says, I directed at Hugo until Nina finally stands up and walks towards him. You know what? For some reason, I cannot process this line. I don't know why. It just hurts my brain. All he says, I directed at Hugo. All right. She's staring at Hugo until Nina finally stands up and walks towards him. All right. So she was staring at Hugo for, for a solid minute and a half. And then she just stood up and then walked towards him. You will take it? Mm. Simply not. What a gentleman. Thank you. Thank you. You don't know how much this means to me. Be glad to help, miss. Um, by the way, miss, um, how much you paying exactly? It just really depends. <laughs> you know, Nina is fine. War timer? Was there, was there any war, war, time, war timer? I have no idea. I forgot. That name is, is a common, you guys. Cut me some slack. Well, Nina, we'll do our best. Nina slightly smiles at Hugo before reaching into her bag once more and taking out a note. What is this note? I thought oh, I thought it was her number for a second. Four seven uh four nine seven zero Church Street. Church. Ah, uh, hopefully there's no church because every single movie, every single horror movie that my friends push me to watch, there's like a single church in the middle of nowhere where there's like one priest is sitting down on an altar. Just doing creepy priest stuff. You want just standing there eerily. This is my address. You know, let's hope that street is just called church. I'll be sure to greet you once we get there then. Did I just repeat that twice? Get there, detective. Of course, just leave it to me. Detective, of course. She politely bows once more before heading to her car and drives back home. Once out of sight, Hugo turns to look at his cluttered desk what what a mess you need do you need to sort things out my friend this this is not not possible still messy but presentable of course i guess i'll have to sort these out later again yes again hugo i mean you got no us yes what's the help or the car 5 30 p.m wait hold up it was 7 90 a.m now it's 5 30 p.m it's gonna be just skipped like a whole Day. Skipped a whole evening. No. Wait, hold on. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, 10 hours! <laughs> that took me a while to count. That was embarrassing. <laughs> From the ongoing downpour to the quiet hums of the car, they sit in silence. Still miles off their destination, Hugo constantly checks the rear view mirror. Alright, uh, someone, someone tailgating us, I bet. Noah, who usually chats his ear off, just sits completely still. Uh, yes, I, I, I realize that he just, he's just sitting for some reason. That's just fairly odd. I mean, why well, he often just, just speaks a lot. But now he just sits down. He looks at the passing street light, reserved, distant. He sounds like me. He won't be silent. You're a lot quieter than usual. What's wrong, Noah? That is a surprise. Have you been looking at me, Hugo? <sighs> Look at you. What do you mean? Like a... Like a... Like a, in a way looking at you? No. You mean like just looking at you? Which one is it? <laughs> no, you idiot. <laughs> you usually just talk a lot. That's, that's all. So, do you miss me talking a lot? Just say it. I don't want to offend Nina earlier, so I kept quiet until she finished. What a thoughtful human being you are, Noah. Didn't catch that from your personality. But it's here. Last name that caught me off guard. War timer? More timers, yes. Was correct. Have you heard of the more timers? They're pretty dis distinguished family. But to be honest, no. No. <laughs> who's, who's the more timers? I've never heard of more timers. Is, is that common? Well, they used to be. What do you mean? But they used to be, there's a full stop. They've been stuck, struck with so many tragedies, but over time, people began to believe they were cursed or something. Every other year, I would see a headline on the local news about the family's members' death. And you know what's strange? One of them have been labeled as accident. <sighs> Snicker, snicker, mysterious accidents, you say, Noah? No foul play, no nothing. Just another unfortunate event for the family. 
Maybe I understand why she wouldn't go to the police. She probably thought they received her as paranoid or hysterical, or worst, crazy, which I gathered from the phone call. <laughs> I can't imagine all this for Nina. And most of all, who knows what we'll find there. I see. Hugo, is that why you decided to come with me? Well, partially. And partially, I believe the other part is you wanted to come with me because we're best friends, I, I guess, Noah? Now, I'm worried about you, though. Yes, exactly. We are friends. You go just slighten up a bit. You go. No one actually cares about you. But I, I bet he's not the demon in disguise, 100%. Oh? This sounds a question mark. Huh? Question mark? Think of it this way. I am the important driver. When you decide to do something pretty reckless shit, I'll be there to drive you to the local hospital. Noah, you thoughtful friend. I love you, Noah. As a friend. As a friend. Uh. Besides, two are better than one. Noah has uh, a good, a good set, good set of. I was gonna say good pair of heads, but I'm but Heads don't come in pairs. They usually just come in one. Exactly. I was fine with Colby coming with me. <coughs> Noah, give us the silent treatment again. Well, have you heard that three is better than two? Uh, 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 yes, of course. Go on, do uh, more time. Uh, I did not read that fast enough. 6 p.m., was it? Passing through countless dead roads and steep cliffs, the estate reveals itself beyond the evergreen. This estate looks very, very haunted. This is like, what is this too? I'm, I'm seeing two like statue figures over here, just white figures, but they will move at night. I have sneak a suspicion. Nestled and tucked away from prying eyes, it stands tall, booming from a distance. Guys, still and dispose. Hugo and Noah could only gaze at the sheer scale of the man. The main, I was gonna say manor. The manor, as they parked adjacent to Nina's car. Wow! And to think she came all the way here just to request us. Did she come, she come specifically to us? Did she know where our office were? Did she plan all this? Did she, did she know about our firm? It took us more than a couple of hours to get here, so it wasn't 6 p.m. I bet it was 8 or 7. Maybe she really didn't have a choice. What What do you mean? Says Noah. Come on, she's waiting for us. Oh, oh. <laughs> Alright, just immediately after exiting the driver's seat. Sudden sharp pain weighs heavy on Hugo's chest. <laughs> Rasping tightly on his coat, he begins to gasp. <laughs> I'm sorry for the voices. <laughs> he gaze, his gaze hazes as he leans close to the car. <sighs> like a fish drawn out of sea, he desperately heaves. But this ache he harbors pales in comparison to the pain far more excruciating. Is it the house? No. Something far more sinister. He feels that something is watching him. Someone, a peace and gaze fixed on him, like clearing at a bug and waiting to strike. I will never forgive you. <laughs> what the hell, says Hugo, which to I reply, what the hell indeed, my friend. Damn it! Already? I need to hurry or else. No one on the other hand <laughs> is very confused. Hey, are you are you alright? No calls out him, snapping him out of this fixate fixate fixated trance. <laughs> Colby nudges his head against him. Hugo, whining with concern of his partner's well being. Did you hear that just now? You what? That voice was so close to my ears. Nina, on the other hand, is everything alright? No, I don't think everything is alright, Nina. Do you think everything is alright? <laughs> well, I'm fine. Don't mind me. Alright, that's what they all say. And he gives like a, an awkward smile here. I'm just some winding out from this trip. That's all. I'd be happy to make you coffee at the very least. It's, if it's no trouble. No, not at all. This is the less, it's the least I can do. Alright, so we're not getting paid, we're getting paid a month of coffee, and I accept that payment graciously. But once again, there's subtle and uneasiness from Nina's surfaces. But before Hugo could get a chance to look further into, she walked off towards the 
front porch without saying another word. Are you sure you're right? Asked Noah, a friend of ours. You sounded like you were choking earlier. I said I'm fine. Besides, we're already here. We can't back out now. Hugo, whatever the main character just says, he's fine. He is not fine. Or 100%. Listen to me. I think you should... Noah abruptly cuts his lecture short as he notices Nina stopping by the front door. Did you bring the coffee, Nina? She stands there silently, as if contemplating something. Nina, are you, are you planning to feed us with a demon inside lurking your house? Which one is it? I, I know this may sound rude, but I didn't get a chance to know your names. Well, you were pretty out of it when you walked in. I'm really sorry about it. <laughs> no worries, says Noah. This is a detective, Noah. And this is Detective Hugo Laurent. Alright, I'm slowly losing it, seems like. <laughs> his assistant, Wallaby. Of course, and I'm his second assistant, Noah de Leon. Of course, glad to know your place, Noah. You're my second assistant. My first assistant is always, uh, Wallaby over here. It seems so surreal. It's like a cartoon. I know, right? He looks like Shaggy and Scooby Doo. Hugo laughs, <laughs> very awkwardly. Nina meekly smiles before turning away from them. I deal with three dots. I haven't been quite honest with you, Detective Florent. Uh? Just like before, as of carefully choosing her next word, she decides that this is a situation. Words are not enough. You'll see for yourself what I mean. And with that, Nina enters the house, leaving the three of the follow behind. He was about to enter through the foyer when he feels a tug on his arm. <sighs> Tug on his arm. I have a sneaky suspicion that this is a bad, bad thing to happen. Don't forget what I told you. If something happens, let me know right away. Oh, you are tugging on my arm. Glad. You'll be the first to know. Trust me. You will be the first to know you because. No, I'm not gonna explain it. Alright. And with that, no one releases his grip on Hugo. They proceed to head in, not knowing what waits them beyond the door. And there goes again the grandfather and his and his lovely, lovely armchair. Getting down there wandering the outside world as he hasn't visited the long, long while. And greeted with a brightly lit hallway, Hugo notes that the interior is just as grand. Grand and old, you and I hate houses. So a huge house and there's nothing in lifeless. It's like a zombie. He might look alive from the outside. Uh, he might look alive from the outside, but from the inside, it's just a walking carcass. Adorned with floral scent and antique paintings, tunes, and an elegant charm found only in the resplendent house such as this. I have no idea what resplendent means, but I'll go with it. However, Hugo notices something even more distinct than of splendor. This. House is much more terrifying inside than out. I agree with you, Hugo. We have the same, have the same th train of thought here. Please come this way, says Nina. Bracing themselves, they enter the dimly lit drawing, drawing room. At first glance, Hugo could not discern the silhouette situated at the far corner. However, on close inspection, he understands the reason for all of Nina and Selene Pegasus. Grandfather, we have guests. Of course, Grandfather, where's oh, those? This Christ has scared me. Okay, Grandfather, you look, look very young and gorgeous and handsome. You sure you're the Grandfather here? Sitting on the armchair is a young man. He is dressed in a white collar, down dressed shirt, tucked in with black shackles, uh, black slacks, and black penny loafers. Shackles. <laughs> I why I said that. Staring only at the window, the young man sits there, dazed, with a little acknowledgement of people around him. Still motionless, like a doll. Grandpa, these are people I spoke of. This is Detective Laurent and his two assistant, Paul B. and Noah. They're going to help us. No, I don't like this, Henry. <laughs> you can you can move your fingers, and you're being host you're being held hostage. You know, Henry. Just. Just blink twice. You, know, you, you can blink. 
I swear it's alright, it's safe to blame Henry. <laughs> Even after introducing them to the head of the Mortime Estate, Hugo and Noah could not help but feel unnerved. The man before them is supposed to be frail and older than any of them, and yet their remains forever unchanging, forever young. They've come a long way, so I'll be making them. It's so coffee. Oh, excuse me. Would you like some, Grandpa? Now, does he usually reply with anything at all, Nina? Why do you, do you just keep asking questions? Do you just keep asking him and he doesn't answer like always? Or The young man still does not reply. Never glancing at Nina or anyone else in the room. Only fixating on the rain. Gulp. I'll be sure to make a cup for you too. He then timidly gestures to Hugo and Noah back to the foyer. Bearing more questions, do follow Nina outside. You want if he just sits there, just not moving whatsoever. Does he even eat? Does he does he have an appetite? Does Does he feel hungry at all? Or maybe does it feel hungry? Is, is this the demon? Very more question. Do follow Nina outside. But before they leave the throwing room, Hugo takes one last look at the young man. There is an all too familiar air about Simon. The eyes, they're similar to his own. Whatever he must be longing for, Hugo knows it well, not end. Will not end well. It was hard. You want a second, second thought? And Hugo's eyes. Oh, what's it called? This outer layer of the eyes? The iris? No, I don't think it's the iris. But it's, it's greenish looking. I don't think that's normal. No one is naturally born with green eyes. That guy, his eyes was glowing in the dark. You know, I, I think they put some fluorescent chemical in his eyes or something. I think that's the reason he doesn't speak anymore. He's, he's like Mark Zuckerberg. He's, he's like a lizard man. You know, that man. Yes, he's my grandpa. The one I ask you all to watch over. I know this is hard to believe, but there's something out of their pocket. It's an antique picture of a young man with slick black hair wearing a luxurious suit. When uh, I am pretty impressed, you can tell a lot from this picture even though it was drawn with, with a crayon. It's to be poised and refined. Completely constructed with the current Henry Mortimer. This isn't much to go by, but I swear he is the same person. Then how does he look so young? But I'm glad Noah is asking the important questions here. Finally. Nina, you want to explain something? It happened a few nights ago. I was on my way to get a cup of tea when I heard a loud thud coming from my grandfather's room. I was worried from that something fell over, so I went in check. When I opened the door, I found him collapsed on the ground, and I rushed to help him. But when I did, he looked so different. So many things were rushing into my head, and he felt so familiar to me. He wore the same clothes that my grandpa wore that night. His face, I recognize his face. He looks, he just looks younger. That was also the same night I found that letter was next to him, already opened. I'm sorry I get for all this. No matter how I went to it, they either said something was wrong with me or my family. With everything going on, maybe they're right. The pools of water, the tripping sounds, the letter, and now this. Maybe my family is really cursed. They're not, replies Hugo. Very confidently, just with his bad posture, <laughs> just slump forwards. Curses aren't real. I beg to differ, Hugo. I've seen some. Detective? But Hugo, I think we easily get too involved in believing that th sort of thing exists. In reality, the ones we fixated on, fears of it, rumors, doubts, lies. All of these, all of those things are what they want to become real. Deep-rooted emotions like that can't possibly be healed or fixed right away, but like a curse, those emotions drag other people down with them. <laughs> it's, it's like that triple exclamation mark noises. Personally, I think you are caught up in all of this, but I assure you, we'll see this through. For you and your father. Grandfather. <clears throat> Thank you. Good. Now, our first priority is to find out more about Lewis. Nina, the letter you showed us back at the agency, do you have any 
Do you have it with you? Yes, it is here. He swipes it out from his pockets. Yes. Do you mind if I borrow it for a bit? I'll be sure to give it back. He smiles and nods. Of course, of course, takes the letter and never return it back, Hugo. Please keep it with you on your person at all times. I'll take upstairs though. You can call me. Check the ground floor. You want, can I have can I have Colby go with me? You want no you can go by yourself. You are you are a six foot five tall guy, so I think I think you're good. Got it. Before they leave, they do their own investigation. Hugo grabs hold of Noah's shoulders. He leans in close enough for Nina to not hear. Keep a close eye on the somewhat time and Nina. Especially Nina. <laughs> okay. I'm counting on you. You too, boy. Ah, yes. Classic Colby. I... Uh, <laughs> the room suddenly turns them up. I'm guessing this is like a visual effect to uh, demonstrate his... Demonstrate him thinking about something. And with that, Hugo heads upstairs, starting his investigation. What time is it? 11.30 p.m. Oh, I have a bad feeling about this. I don't want to go any further into this place, you guys. I do not like this. I, f I have a bad feeling about this. Uh, after searching vigorously through each of the rooms, he knew his finding would eventually lead him here. This is it, says Hugo. Walks towards the nearest lampshade and opens it. Dimly illuminated, he sees the extent of how lavish this part of the house is. From customized straight to the vintage furniture, everything here exudes of extravagance. But much like the interior, Hugo has been so far, has seen so far, he finds this one is particularly reeks of it. I know, right? It just looks so fancy. Blasted from wall to wall, a sense of gloom lingers. It's as if the room itself is mouldering despite its preserved nature. I need to hurry. I need. I, I don't want to stay here for too long, says Hugo. Twenty more minutes passed. He searches and searches, still with no sign of anything. Yeah, he's, he's thumbling among everywhere and the drawers. Ah, classic Hugo. No one... No, no... No one thing pertaining... Not one thing pertaining to Lois. Ah, so hard to read. Right, his face expression just turned. He, damn it, nothing! So as he cleared out everything, just blank everywhere. No, it has to be someday. I'm just missing something. He ponders again before remembering the letter. This is only a proof of existing. The only proof Lewis exists so far. I'll try to read it again. Maybe I open it. Uh, Nina said that there's a bunch of letters. You Maybe we should inspect the other letters as well. Maybe it partakes a clue. Maybe there's a clue partaking in each one of the letters that we need to combine all together. Maybe perhaps I'm just, I'm just throwing out stuff. Random guesses. As he takes the letter out from the envelope, he notices a change within. What? Bearing no foreboding, threat to the bottom of the page, it looks just like a regular letter. What the? Uh, if you can't come, then I understand. It's pretty dreary, after all. Ah, uh, but if I can ask you for one last favor of you, could you keep my locket? I know this is selfish of me, but I'd like for you to have it. I'll be happy knowing it's with you. Thanks for everything, Henry. Forever yours, Lewis. But now, who the hell is Lewis? Lewis. <laughs> this is the same Lewis. Who was cause? It was the cause of all of this. To be honest, if I'm reading all the letters, then I thought Lewis would be some kind of evil horror guy or something. He would he would just murder us in our sleep or something. But it seems like he knows. Uh, he knows, uh, he knows Henry for some reason. I don't, I don't really know why. Friends? Family? But Nina said that Lewis, the name Lewis, is not a name that she knows from family. 
friend relationship. I, I don't know what to explain this. My, <laughs> your eyes, my head is just, my head is about to kabushi. I thought he was the cause of all of this. I don't understand. Without warning, a sort of click can be heard across the bedroom. Is it unlocked? It? Something unlocked itself. It turns around, sees. She is at the foot of the bed chest. Unlike the other furniture, its dark and rustic features have not been maintained well. Left to rot on his own. Bring himself he offers his chest. Beside his crumbles together a bunch of notes, the small trinkets he could contain his rummage through when he stumbles upon across an old newspaper article. Oh oh young man found dead by the lake. You say? <laughs> An unidentified young man was found on the morning of XXXXXXXX three days prior to his death, according to the police. Ruled out as suicide, police have claimed that the troubled youth shot himself. This certainly is a tragic loss, an unfortunate event indeed. Mr. XXXXXXXXXXX comments of classic XX. No claims of his body has been made yet. Lewis. But the corner of Hugh's eye spots a brightly glint buried underneath the closet. Oh, it's a trinket. A locket. It's not a trinket. A trinket is like a small test tube a potion, maybe? A trinket. A locket. A brilliant gold child. Unblemished. Retaining a timeless luster. <laughs> Henry's boyfriend. <laughs> The side of it safeguards a picture of a young man with glasses smiling brightly. This must be a locket of us. We was talking about. It's so pretty. I'm surprised it still shines like this. And this picture. Did you put this here? No. But I've been Henry. Why? Why would we be stored like this? What should I do? Oh my god, my head is about to explode, you guys. Alright, I think... Uh, let me just save this real quick here. You know what, guys? I think this is the end of the video. You know what? This video is already one hour long. But the edit might do it like maybe 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes. I don't really know, but this is the end of... Uh, this game called again? Stillwater. You know what? Stillwater, you know, so far sounds... Looks like a great game. I really like it so far. I'm looking forward to play this again in the future. Maybe I'll release another video. But who knows, but in case you guys have a lovely day, and I'll see you guys later on. So, um, <clears throat> take care, gentlemen. I'll see you the next time we meet. Perhaps. Maybe a couple of months, because that's, <laughs> that's how lazy I am. I just, I just post, like, videos every couple of months. <laughs> Goodbye.